Hey, Wrecker, how's it going? Hey, Nick. Good. <laughs> hey, Nick, how you doing? Good. Good. I, I was starting. All right, Wrecker, this is what I want to talk to you about today. You know how in a past discussion, you told me you have a bucket list. Like yes, there are I certain do. things you want to accomplish, like academically. You're this very competitive person and you set these goals for yourself and then you want to meet them. And one of those is you have this like list of, of journals that you want to hit. Well, I've hit a bunch of journals and I'll tell you one journal that keeps rejecting me every couple of years when I said something there. Oh, can I it's, guess? Can I guess, please? <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> no, no, I don't know. I, I think I know where you're going with this. <laughs> well, it's management science, right? So I figured, all right, we should get uh, DJ Wu, who's the information systems editor at management science, uh, uh, to talk to us and tell me why I'm getting rejected. So hi, DJ. <laughs> now, DJ, in defense, you're not the one rejecting me. This was a few years back, my last submission, but yeah. Thanks, Nick and Ian, for having me. Um, yeah, let me say a little bit about uh, management science and also tell you, like, you know, what has happened uh, since I have uh, become uh, the uh, department editor, one of the three department editors. Uh, so, so wait, how long have you been? How long have you been, been department editor? Has been three years, my wow. friend. <laughs> yeah. That's so, cool. Yes, uh, just for uh, uh, you know, uh, for those audience who are not familiar with management science, um, and management science uh, is sixty nine years old. It uh, it was founded in nineteen fifty four, uh, and management science publishes scientific research on the theory and the practice of management science. Um, and let me tell you what set us different from other journals uh, is. Uh, First of all, it is truly interdisciplinary, and management yeah. science has 14 departments. 14. So there's like finance, there's operations, operations there's, there's information there's marketing, systems. Yeah. Innovation, exactly. entrepreneurship, right? Yeah. You know more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I have another one that I know more. I, I bet you you don't know who the first editor-in-chief of management science was. Do you know? Uh, yes, he's, I think his name is, um, uh, is West Churchman. Churchman. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you know, why, you know why Nick knows this DJ? Do you know why Nick happens to know that? I have no idea. Nick. Well, Ch you know, Churchman is from, is from Case Western <laughs> where Nick did his PhD. So at yeah. Case uh, Western, they got this tradition of just like, you know, all the great people ever all were at Case Western and there's no one else. It's only, he only, he always, keeps talking about the same people and churchman of course the big scientist and a system scientist and he found a mention science so so nick told yeah. me but here we're talking to dj he's at georgia tech it's like all right so like half the important people and is it like you look in the southern part of america anything interesting that happened came from georgia tech right so <laughs> yeah I like that. <laughs> Thank you. So, DJ, I don't, I don't think this. It's, it's quite right that management science is different with these departments, right? And I like speaking for myself, and I think many others. Um, many of us don't know what the deal is with these departments. So, I'm guessing, like, I've literally never submitted to management science ever. And so, I'm guessing that you know, to me, that sounds like a drop down list. When I go to Scholar One and submit, I have to pick a department. Is that correct? That's that's true. Uh, so we have fourteen departments. Uh, you have to decide which department you're going to submit. We do have I scholars uh, who have published in the finance department and other areas too, uh, because I, as as you know, uh, we are also doing interdisciplinary research. Yeah. Uh, but for I, as um, so we actually have three uh, co DEs. Um, so uh, Professor Hama Bhargava of UC Davis um, is another one, and also uh, Anando Ghosh uh, from NYU. So we have three uh, DEs. Mm -hmm. So here is the thing. If you want to submit to the IS department, um, so you also need to pick one DE. Um, very likely, you'll get the DE you want. Uh, so mm -hmm. on this, you know, on this one of the DE is truly overloaded. Of course, you know, so if you if I have a conflict interest with my co colleagues, co-authors, I cannot handle your paper. But pretty much, you know, you can pick, you know, see uh, whoever you like uh, among uh, one of the three DEs. So what? So how do I choose between the three of you? Uh, if I if I do saying doing something in machine learning. Who do I send it to? Oh, all of us. 
Yeah, well, we uh, we all do machine learning. As you know, I am editing a management science special issue on human algorithm connection. So that's a joint effort of seven departments. Uh, and the management science has the most submissions. Uh, so yeah, so you know, we so the are deadline's already over. The deadline's already over. So we received three hundred nineteen submissions and eighty five uh, to to my dex to is. Wow. And remember, this is seven uh, departments. Uh, so, you know, basically, uh, IS, you know, see, is, uh, I think, uh, the champion sit in the front row for this special yeah. issue submission. Uh, the other special issue I am doing, you still have time, uh, Nick, um, this is not for management science, but it's for ISR. Uh, RSR, we have a special issue on analytical creativity. You can think about like machine creativity or computational creativity. Basically, yeah. how do we unlock the black box of cre uh, creativity? Yeah. So you get when a lot of submissions on, 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 on Dali and, and stuff like this. Nick, just go home, do some homework. We don't need to talk well, about that. When is the deadline? <laughs> uh, it's uh, the, the, the fir uh, January 31st. Oh, okay. So I have time to start a paper now. <laughs> yes, you have You have time. You have time. <laughs> All right. So I have two questions for you about management science. Uh, the first is, how how do I... So there's Hamant, there's Aninda, and there's you, DJ. And I know, DJ, you can do anything. But how do I decide which of the three of you to send what kind of paper? Like, just, I have to know, like, is there, do you, do you distinguish with each other? Like I'll handle this type, you handle that type or no, everybody just kind of well, goes with. Uh, yeah. Them. So we, we don't, uh, but we do coordinate it sometime. Uh, but, you know, see, I think the first thing is, you know, you, you, know, you submit to the DE, uh, you know, you trust. Uh, so very likely you'll get the DE um, and because pretty much everybody can handle everything. The reason is we use the same AE board. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. you know, it's the, uh, yeah. the, uh, the decision maker, you know, see from my perspective, AE is very important because we're trying to match. Uh, uh, so we are like a platform two-sided. We match reviewers and I'm uh, sorry, AEs and authors, of course, reviewers and authors too. Uh, so it's to me, um, does not matter who do you send, you know, say as the yeah. DE, uh, we we'll use the same AE. But if you really want to ask, you know, say a question, if you really, you know, say are worried, so uh, her mom, you know, and if you have analytical modeling paper, so, you know, say he will be a great choice. Uh, if you have an empirical paper, particularly like you need uh, high, highly sophisticated econometric techniques, you, you may send to Professor Anando Ghosh. Right. I handle everything else. Everything else. <laughs> <laughs> so, DJ, can I can I ask a, a couple of, I guess, superstitions, um, you know, that I've heard, I suppose, about management science, and we can see whether we get to the truth of them. Um, so first is, um, I've heard that you do a two rounds up or out policy. So that you do no more than two rounds of uh, reviews, meaning that at the end of the second round of reviews, papers have to be at the sort of very, very minor conditional acceptance type of stage, you're not engaging in more major high-risk revision. Is that true? Thank you. Yeah, it looks like you have done a lot of research about us. Oh, I, I <laughs> hear a lot of things. <laughs> it is true. So we have a two-round policy. Uh, our, our average, we do honor this policy. Um, so we that's why, uh, you know, see, you know, <clears throat> don't get upset uh, if your paper got rejected from management science. My papers got rejected all the time. <laughs> so Nick, don't. You're so with the me. Reason all is, right. Yes, it was uh, it was because of the journalist policy. We do try to honor this. Uh, so basically, in the really send us very well polished papers. So we really trying to make a decision in two rounds, and wow. by and the large, uh, we do that. Um, so we also have something else. Uh, Nick is something new. Is other journalists they don't have it, uh, but they may now. They're trying to follow us. Uh, is this? Uh, we have two tracks. We have the regular track and a fast track. For fast track, pretty much. You got uh, you you know whether you're gonna make it or not in one round because we're not allowed to give you a major revision uh, or reject resubmit for the fast track. So, but you have a breakthrough idea. So we have on the on the journal like what kind of papers we're looking for fast track. But if you do, and uh, we were we're trying to uh, make a decision basically in one round. In the first round, we'll tell you you know it's a minor revision. Are you in or out? Wow. Yeah. So who makes that decision? Is it is it you or is it the AE? Who makes the decision? 
the AE makes recommendation and the DE, uh, you know, say we'll discuss with the AE. And uh, so, but again, uh, from my perspective, AE plays a very important role. Uh, so one advice is when you are recommending those three AEs, uh, you can also recommend a guest AE, uh, you know, you want to uh, nominate scholars uh, you truly trust. Because you know, see those AEs uh, you nominated uh, will play a, a, a major role, uh, unless it, the paper does not fit. You know, um, but if you are thinking really deeply about who is the best AE for your papers, give us three names, including guest AEs. Uh, so you know, uh, that'll be very helpful uh, to the uh, to the authors. Wow, yeah. DJ. Um, so we've talked about this sort of how many rounds of reviewing is appropriate. Uh, many times on this podcast, and you may or may not know that, like Nick and I actually like very much favor this, uh, you know, fewer rounds of reviews. Now, I know that you've been also an editor for ISR, and of course, you, 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 you're an author yourself, you publish in the quarterly in ISR and management science and many other journals. And you know that in many of these journals, we do not have a two rounds up or out um, model. So comparing you know experiences like do you think that's that's the way to go because i do think it is i think that's the way to go i think every journal should be like that and some journals try to model management science and follow it do you think that's the way to go because i really strongly believe it is or um, that that's what we should we should get authors to give us high quality very polished papers to begin with not rough ideas knowing that they'll have four or five rounds to develop it anyway Thank you. Uh, I think this is, uh, you know, we should open this to the community. I, that's why uh, I really appreciate uh, this podcasting. So, you know, uh, we need to hear the voice of the community. We need to have open discussion. For example, uh, we can have uh, open discussion in informs, uh, information system society business meeting. Um, so here is my perspective and also trying to explain to the audience. Uh, so why we have this two round policy. The first, uh, the first reason is management science. We have a huge number of submissions. Um, so this year, so we are going to have over uh, forty one hundred. So like total management wow. science and uh, IS, we also have a huge jump. So like you know, uh, see this year we have additional uh, thirty submissions to the IS uh, uh, desk. So let me just give you an example of what our data have. So this year, for a regular track, we have 239 submissions. And for, for fast people. track, yeah. So and for fast track, we have 40 pay, 40 submissions. So basically in total, we're talking about 279 submissions to management such as IS that, that did not take into account the other additional 85 submissions for the special wow. issue. Yeah. So wow. Into see, three editors. Yeah, to three. Yeah, we're busy. Actually, for, the, for the special issue, it's just only to me. <laughs> oh no! So you're busy. Uh, I'm very busy. I'm overloaded. Um, but anyway, so we have a huge number of submissions, and also, uh, like you said, uh, so it's yeah, the submissions in by and large they are very high quality. I'm very impressed. Okay, because. Most of, of the time, I'm not bragging about management science. Uh, many authors, they were trying mm. management science first. Uh, so basically, yeah. and they are very good papers, but we always tell them if we think in for sure two rounds, you know, say, you know, you're not going to make it. You made it multiple rounds, you know, say, we we'll, you know, we basically return your paper so that you can submit to other journals uh, because they yeah. can help you better. Uh, and, um, uh, and also, Nick, to your question, see, we actually, we have we increased submission, but we did not increase uh, the rejection rate. Uh, not every paper submitted to management science was rejected. <laughs> our, <laughs> Good. <laughs> our access rate, okay, actually to your surprise, you may not know for IS desk, uh, after we joined the three of us is 16.3%. Oh, wow. Oh, that's pretty wow. good. Yeah, that's you know, you may good. not know. <laughs> the, the journal's average is 13.6%. I'm actually reading yeah. the data from the EIC. Yeah. I just got it from him in, in October. We had a meeting. Wow. That's phenomenal. So you're doing your job. Your job is to publish papers, not reject them. And that's what you're doing is publishing papers. That, it, it, exactly. Yeah. That's why we are here. So basically, we increase the exception rate of manual science IS stacks uh, and without decreasing the quality. And the quality is also uh, okay, awesome. uh, very high. The reason is because we have uh, more submissions. We have actually, the EIC said we have 10% increase this year, but my count is we have over 20, 20%. So. 
mm. increase the, uh, this year. So like, you know, ISS is doing great. Uh, so over mm. the years, in particularly, fast track looks really better uh, for management science uh, for the IS desk. So we have published many papers uh, in management science. Um, and uh, basically for management science, fast track in one month, you know, you'll know your paper, whether you wow. make it or not. So That's great. DJ, DJ, can I, uh, a, a second prejudice or superstition, I guess, is um, that, you know, mention science is a top journal, of course, but only for certain genres. So in other words, like it it, it, it has the appearance that it's not overly diverse in the types of methods it, it is, espouses, you know. So people say you can't publish qualitative work or you can't publish, I don't know. Um, Behavioral. Behavioral. Yeah. You can't publish design science. So, you know, you have this, this connotation of, you know, First of all, you know, the, the scientific method in the very classical understanding, metrics, surveys, experiments, statistic heavy kind of work. Is that, is that even true or is that a is that a prejudice? That's not true. Uh, thing, uh, things, you know, uh, the three of us, you know, came on board. Uh, I can speak my mo my own experiences. So among the 319 submissions to the special issue, which is human algorithm connection, the first paper for the entire Special issue accepted is a design science paper. Oh, cool. I accept That's it. Very cool. <laughs> yeah, good for you. Uh, That's awesome. Yes. Yes. We actually, we are all truly open minded. Uh, for myself, when I hand all kinds of papers, okay, uh, design science, uh, behavior, we love behavior paper experiments, uh, and of course, empirical uh, and also analytical modeling. So we are open to all kinds of well, methodologies. Notice Notice that DJ listed a bunch of things, but he did not list qualitative. And if you go back to management science in the late 90s, like I'm thinking Stephen Tomke has that really cool article on experimentation in management science. There's some really great qualitative papers back in the day. I will tell you this right now. There's I would never even think to submit a qualitative wow. paper to management science, and I don't know anybody who would. They're just not in there. That's not the... And any papers I do submit to management science, it's because I'm doing something really cool, I think, at least methodologically. Uh, and then they get rejected for other reasons, right? But I always think that management science, the people there can handle the harder methods better than other journals. And yeah, I don't, so that's my my kind of, like, I think, all right, you, pristine, hardcore methods, you might send to management science. If you're doing qualitative theory, not in analytical modeling theory, but like conceptualizing or any. You don't even go near management science, right? That that would be my thank thought. you, Nick. You... Uh, yeah, thank you, Nick. I appreciate the feedback. You know, this kind of conversation is very useful for us. Um, so we do uh, welcome, uh, you know, again, qualitative. Uh, we have uh, Alina uh, Karahana. She is awesome uh, in handle these kind of papers. Uh, and of course, you know, you can always submit uh, your guest A. Say like, you know, because. Uh, uh, maybe this is uh, our fault. We don't see many submissions in doing this kind of work. Maybe it's because of perception, or we may say even that bias. But you know, as an author, you can always nominate uh, the AEs you trusted, uh, and uh, you can also nominate AEs from our other departments. Uh, so we are free to use AEs from, uh, for example, OB organizational behavior. So for those authors who do experimental uh, work, uh, we can use uh, the, we have a behavior economics department. So we do that. Uh, they also use us, for example, um, in other areas like strategy, innovation. Uh, they also use the our A's because some of our A's, they have expertise. The other thing I want to tell you, Nick, if you take a look of our A's, uh, you know, many of our AEs, they are SEs of MISQ and, um, and SEs for RSR. Uh, so basically see a, a amazing overlap, maybe because of the reputation management science, you know, see, so the, the other top journals, they are SEs, our, our, our AEs, uh, they know how to handle, like uh, example is yeah. Pei Yu Chen, you know, she is, you know, she knows uh, different methodologies. Professor Feng Zhou of Harvard University is another yeah, example. There's a quite a considerable overlap there. I see that. Yeah, uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's interesting. Also, you know, I think it's completely fine if if journals occupy certain spaces in the overall ecosystem of journals. If everything is accepting everything, that wouldn't be very helpful at all, right? I think so. You know, it's it's. I think it's completely fine if someone says, "Look, we have a tendency," or a you know. I don't know. We, we certain genres dominate our journal. That's completely fine because in other journals, other types of genres would dominate. 
Um, and, you know, for example, to me, it was always like, well, you know, quality is probably if it, it sort of fits topically, I would rather send it to organization science. Why? Maybe it's a matter of perception. Maybe it's a matter of prejudice. Maybe it's a matter of the people that are on the board. But it seems more receptive. I'm not saying that, you know, whether it is or not is a completely different question, but it does look like it. Right. So I just Googled the editorial statement of management science and I searched for the word qualitative in this very, very long time, it doesn't appear. <laughs> so across all the different departments, it, it does not appear. Everything else does appear. So, you know, there, there's probably something to it. But that, of course, it doesn't necessarily mean that this work can't get published. But it's probably a reason why that you, I would venture that you get fewer submissions, right, in qualitative work. Yeah, I appreciate the feedback. Definitely, uh, you know, again, uh, you know, we love to have a, com a com uh, conversation with the community, like how can we do better? Uh, but let me tell you, the definition of management science is okay, now back way to Professor Churchman at Case Western University. <laughs> management yeah. science defined as the science of management. Uh, so that's why we are uh, we are broad. Anything to do with management, you know, see, that's our focus. We did not say, <laughs> you know, it's the qualitative science <laughs> yeah, yeah, of yeah, management. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. you know, again, uh, we you know see. I have a strong view to open uh, the mind to embrace all methodologies. Uh, that's why we did this f fast track. Well, the fast track, uh, so we have three criteria, but you, if you can open a new field, um, you know, if you can to change the society, okay, if you get the media attention, so send to uh, the fast track because the fast track is, is something, you know, we really want to get it out, just like, just like science. So science, yeah. they're very short, okay? So that's why we want it fast, you know. For those kind of uh, submissions or papers we publish in the fast track, uh, you know, we you don't have to do like, you know, uh, you know, say a million of robustness checks, you know. Um, we don't mm -hmm. need that. Uh, we're also trying to, uh, you know, for the young scholars in the audience, you know, move away from defensive writing. So I think in the, you know, top scholars, you know, look at all those all these submissions, you know, to management science or to our IS journals. They are top talent, outliers of the society. Yeah. We should think about how to make better use of those, you know, knowledge producers. You know, say, mm -hmm. can we, you know, see, uh, change the process? You know, one way of trying to do is, you know, shorten this knowledge production process by doing fast track. Um, again, move away from defensive uh, writing. And we don't have to be multiple rounds, okay, in of reviews because we need to, you know, say, get uh, the impact out faster. So yeah. that is what we're trying to do uh, in management science. Uh, in the ISR special issue, we are editing, we're trying to use GitHub in, in the second round. So we are trying to speed the process of author reviewer uh, you know, cycle. Okay, why don't we just go to uh, the are, same, same place? <laughs> how are you doing that? What do you mean GitHub? How are you gonna use GitHub in the review process? Yes, well, still, we're just thinking about it. Uh, but this is something we learned from computer science. You know, so it's anonymous. You don't have, you don't know yeah. who is who, but you can easily do like many times a clarification questions. Okay, that one can be easily, you know, say clarified between the author and the review. Of course, without revealing the identity. And many science in us, uh, I think a few years ago, we started the practice is when the review reports are. Uh, they are not consistent, uh, then the AE will put a, a panel and put all the reviews together. Again, the reviewers don't know each other's identity, but they can see each other's report. And uh, we offer the reviewers a chance that would you like to change your mind? Uh, that is an wow. interesting one. Yeah, I've seen this. I've seen this in computer science, uh, mm -hmm. where they do, do this very often, not blinded. So the reviewers know each other's identity, but usually before it goes back to the authors, there's a sort of like a, like, what do you call it? A panel round where they comment each other and actually see if they can reach consensus and also change some of their own reviews in light of what the other reviewers have said. It's like an extra exactly. step in between. Um, I've, yes. I haven't seen it blinded. Uh, on the GitHub, I've seen that before. Um, the idea is, I think, Nick, that it's also, you can make all your research materials, like your code and your data, you can put it on, on that platform anonymously. And then people, like reviewers, the advantage is if you want to run that robustness check, well, do it yourself. <laughs> you know, <laughs> run your own analysis. And so that means that sometimes we can we can answer certain queries that reviewers might have without needing to put that in appendix G and appendix H and making the paper even longer. That that's I guess what you're trying to do, right, DJ? 
Excellent. Yes, you know, for the uh, for the we have already doing that, uh, but the management science, uh, you know, say the platform is not ready yet because uh, management science has one informs journal, uh, one of the informs journals, and you know, the policy has to be applied to all informs journals. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. why we don't have a computer system that can help us to do that. But we are now doing that manually down the road, and also it's I, I think you know it's advice uh, for the authors in the audience is if you have GitHub, do that. You know, give us the the link that will help the reviewers and yeah. down the road you know see we will so once your paper got accepted uh, we have this uh data uh, form now other journals they are following so you know see so if you have a github that will make uh the, the data editors uh, job easier that's so cool it's such a good idea i like it so much mm -hmm. and I, I just like i know this is not quite fair but i was thinking like why did management science have to come up with that? You know, like the IS journal should have come up with this, uh, but I know you are an IS journal, of course. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's such a great idea. I wish that everyone would do that. It hey, really Young, speeds I, up the I got a I got a virus. I have a plea. Okay? Nick and Young, please help us. Please count management science as one of the top IS journals. And it yeah. is. <laughs> and, you know, very, very frankly and openly, it is. It absolutely is. It always has it had this department for a long, long time. It always had is people on the board to handle is papers and as nick said we have a history of great is papers that go back uh, you know for decades in management science no it absolutely is and i'm, I'm yeah, apologize record it, it, yeah. you're missing you're missing with dj's saying so i think it's because you're in a maybe european school and you don't make it in u.s schools there are it, it's really kind of bloody how we do it. You know, we have this like UT Dallas list of elite journals. And of course, management science is on there, but it's an operations in the UT Dallas list so that if really? people are like, yeah. So if they're, if you're like a strategy group, uh, so this is what management science has to deal with. <clears throat> if you're a strategy group and you send a strategy at management science, you're not counted. You're only counted if you do SMJ. That's ridiculous. If you're finance, you're only counted finance, uh, your whatever three finance journals, not the finance track at, at management science and IS. You know, there's this, there are these people who have these these lists where they'll have MISQ, ISR, JMIS, even JAIS. Management science is not on the list, even though, of course, it's an elite journal. But but for whatever reason, it doesn't make it to certain lists because it's this cross-disciplinary journal. And yeah, that is a problem, I think. And that's the problem with counting. That's the problem yeah. with having lists and counting because anybody with a brain should realize that management science is an elite. And this is what happens in Europe. It also happens in Asia, in Australasia, where it was beforehand. It doesn't matter. Like everyone knows, and it's it's an A star or you know tier one or whatever you call that. Everyone knows it. And if you have that on your resume, then it speaks for you. I've never heard that everyone said, like, I'm sorry, this is an operations journal. If I could get published in operations, journal, I'll do that tomorrow. Absolutely. Yeah. You know? So I was at a, I was talking to someone at a big state school in the US not that long ago who told me no one in our management department could get tenure with management science. Those were his exact words. That's right? ridiculous. And uh yeah, it's it's because of these weird lists and counting practices. But DJ, I do have a question for you because I think that's changing. I think, you know, we talked when you visited at Notre Dame and, and we don't have a strict list in the sense, you know, we're trying to holistically, of course, people have to publish a good volume of papers, but we're trying to holistically assess actual research rather than than just simply counting and that sort of thing. But you do, you, you are spanning management science and ISR, right? You do a lot of stuff with ISR, senior editor, you were, you're, you're not anymore, right? And then, then you're at, man, how do I, as an author, think, okay, I have this great, you know, we're working on this social network paper. Uh, I think it could probably fit in either journal because we're doing some pretty, uh, you know, some some hardcore methodological stuff, some statistical stuff, uh, and it's got some theory, right? We've got a, a nice uh, network theory. So how do I decide whether I go to IS at management science or ISR? Because to me, they're similar, like they're both in forms. They both have technical people on the board that can handle this, right? Uh, what do I do? Well, uh, I respect uh, the author's choice. Okay. Yeah, I think either one is great. Uh, but of course, in my in my role as the for for, for management science, of course, I would love to see your paper first. <laughs> yeah, but how do I if I'm making the decision? Like, just tell me what like you've submitted to both. What are the criteria you use? Do you just undifferentiate them and pick one first where you have the best odds, or is there something about the fit of the journal or? 
Like, why do, how would I choose one? I guess if I'm fast tracking, I would pick management science if I loved it that much. Cause you have a fast track and ISR takes three years to mm-hmm. publish something. Right. Right. Uh, but, but if it's not a fast track, it's a normal submission. And is there something about the, is it just the editorial board? What, how do I make my decision between say those two journals? Yeah, I think that you know, if the paper is very, very, very well po- polished, I think you send to management science again. So, you know, keeping that, you know, see, we have a two round policy and by and large, we, we truly honor that policy. Um, so therefore, um, you know, you don't want to you know, send a paper to management science and hope the A's and the reviewers are going to work for you, work together uh, because we just don't have that capacity. And yeah. uh, Hopefully down the road, uh, we can have open discussion whether we should change the culture or not. Okay, that's up for debate. But I appreciate our sister journals like MSQ. Yes. They have a very nice community. So we're trying to do that. We're trying to also try to do, we, did, we, we first did a paper development workshop. Mm. Down the road, we may want to do uh, a review workshop too. Uh, so that, you know, say how we can, again, just like what you're doing. Uh, I'm so thankful uh, so that we can, you know, to let people know what's the process of management science. But I will say that uh, don't send uh, the papers. You hopefully say, let's work together. Other yeah. journals, they do. They actually work with you. But here, yeah. just because our volume submissions and also, you know, we don't have a culture basically to work together with the authors so if yeah. the paper is very much polished and definitely sent to management science, you'll get published faster because for other journals, you may have six round. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, yeah. For, but six round, if you can make it, that's not bad. But what if you got rejected after six round? Which has happened to me, by the way. It did happen really? to me once. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry yeah, to hear that. Yeah, and it was tragic. So DJ, yeah. um, you mentioned your fast track option. Now that's really interesting. Like in my mind, we talked to Dorothy Leitner from JAIS and they, they have this promise option, which is, is slightly different, you know, similar in intent, like give an early promise to authors about whether or not to publish that. Now you explained it to us, but I was wondering, um, do you already have a NIS paper that went through fast track, like an exemplar that you could mention here? Oh yes, yes, there, there are there are many. Uh, there are many papers you know has been published. Uh, so uh, we actually have a website. So you know, say uh, all, you know, I encourage audience to go to information. Uh, it's called Information System Society, uh, a website of uh, of informs. And right there, so we actually put archive for all pub, all papers published in management science IS track because again, oh. there's a perception we don't accept any papers. <laughs> but you know, if you go to uh, the uh, the website uh, of uh, Information System Society, so they are journal, and then one journal is RSR, another journal is management science. Uh, management science we list like all papers wow. we published in, in the past five years. And, oh, that's uh, cool! It's yes, fantastic! All, yeah. Yes, I will also like you know uh, uh, post some of samples of uh, fast track papers because that one we have a special policy. It's because to help the authors to get tenured, uh, some schools they may count in the the lens. You know that's weird. <laughs> that's <Yeah. laughs> like Nick, you says every paper is different, which is true. And how can you value the quality of a paper by the number of pages? Don't you think that's just no, weird? No. <laughs> okay, DJ, I just looked up this web page, which I didn't know existed. Nick, did you know this of this page? I didn't know it. I will well, put it I on do want to talk notes. about ISS because this is something, especially in, in the rest of the world, we might not. Uh, yeah, Exactly. Let, let, before we get there, because I just looked it up, and yes, indeed, you see all the papers published in the IS Department of Mentoring Science in the past few years. And you said the the um, the fast track papers they, they open up a new field, right? That was one of your uh, criteria, right? Yeah. And yes, I see yes. one paper, and I'm guessing this must be a fast track because there's a paper. It's called Quantum Economic Advantage. It's about quantum computers. Now, surely that's got to be a fast track, right? That's the first paper I've seen on quantum computers in IS. That's so cool. Uh-huh. I accept that that paper. <laughs> as, can, <laughs> That's awesome. as as I'm so proud. Okay, I won't tell the process, but you can see, like most of the time, the paper was actually in the author's hands. Um, and you know, see that is another example I want to use to motivate the audience. Uh, so you don't even have the data. We, you know, say they just write a math model and predict. You know, say under what conditions we should see the emergence of the quantum computing industry. That's so cool. I love it already. Yeah, cool. I haven't even read it in full, but to, but was that a fast track paper, DJ? 
Yes, it's a fast track paper. I, I did not hmm. finish my sentence. It's because fast track for the reasons we just talked about, we are reasons we don't tell you whether it's a fast track or not. So that just in case the schools, they're trying to discriminate fast track against a regular track. So we don't, uh, when we publish, we don't say that. However, okay. If the author gave us permission, we will. So in this case, the author did give me the permission. So it is a fast track paper. Uh, the other paper I got permission is Haman Bhagava. He has the platform paper. So, you know, the, you know, he gave us the permission, um, you know, to tell, okay, look, this is a fast track paper. So we will, okay, add, uh, so samples of fast track papers on that website as well. Um, you know, once we get the permission, uh, uh from the authors. DJ, when I send you my fast track paper, you can have my permission to tell people it's fast track. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. All right, so that. I did want to tell you this record, though. So you might not even know about this ISS, right? Because I do know I don't about think ISS. You do? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I think a lot of times, IS re we think of ISIS, right? And wits and whys. And that's like our main conference, and those are our main places we go. And then, and then, DJ, I don't know if you know this. I've been trying to uh, get more IS people at Academy of Management because it's the biggest conference, the biggest management conference there is, and everyone's talking about AI. And the IS group historically was kind of small, although it's growing rather significantly. Right? It's the CTO group. So I'm trying to get more, you know, people who would be at ISS, for example, and Wits and Wise, and those folks at Academy of Management. And I heard from my buddy here at Notre Dame, uh, Ahmed Abbasi, that uh, ISS is trying to kind of do the same thing. Uh, there's a group of people who are ISS that typically go, and they're trying to open it up to, say, behavioral folks, a lot of data science. They're linking with the data science community. They're trying to grow beyond the historical ISS. Are you a – hey, nice mug, by the way. That's your Notre Dame mug you're you're drinking from. That's, Excellent. I, I the, <laughs> yes, for today's talk. <laughs> I'm drinking from the same mug right here. See, we're on the other side of the country. Oh, thank you. Excellent. Yeah, that's my favorite mug. <laughs> Awesome. When you visited. So my, I guess my question to you is this, you're among the leaders and you're, you're one of those participants in ISS. And it's of course in forms. Um, it's November every year, right? October, November, October, you submit huh? in the spring. What is it like? What is it for like, which PhD, if I'm a PhD student, how do I decide to go to say ISS or Academy of Management or ISIS? We just send our PhD students to all three. <laughs> for now and then they can pick which one they feel more comfortable with throughout their careers right uh um do you do you have any th thoughts on like uh are, are you seeing more like diversity of students coming in i know iss is growing like crazy yes yes i go yeah i go to all three uh so this year say i has i think they're gonna hit 600 members uh you know if you are not an iss member i highly recommend those young scholars you do submit uh to you know, well, it's only thirty dollars, and uh, Nick is, is paying, right? Your advice is, yeah. is paying. But wait, isn't it, it? You don't have to. So there's the full paper, but then there's also like some other submission, isn't there? Like an extended abstract or something that you can do for ISS, or no? Am I mixing up? Oh, my oh, 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 I'm sorry. So yeah, we're talking about two things. Um, so yeah, there's a conference called CIST. Uh, CIST is Conference of Information Systems and Technology. So that's now actually in a set, uh, separate and a standalone. Uh, although, okay, we work together, but the conference is something separate. Uh, I, but I do want to appreciate, um, you know, say you are mention of ISS, uh, because I do want to, you know, say introduce, uh, uh, to the audience ISS because that's additional resources uh, that would benefit uh, the audience. Uh, so ISS, it belongs to Informs. It's Information Systems Society. Um, so, you know, you know, you don't have to be Informs member. You can only be ISS members for ISS hmm. member only is now $30. Uh, but what, what, what are you going to get, uh, for, for as a member? You are qualified for this Chan uh, Nanomaker dissertation award. Uh, yeah. then, you get, then we have, uh, we have, uh, uh um, to build a career of young IS scholars, we have awards all the time, depends on your milestones. You know, we have dissertation award. Then we have Golden Davis Young Scholar Award. And then we have uh, Sandy Slaughter Early Career Award. And uh, then we have a Distinguished Fellow Award. Mm -hmm. So basically it's trying to help uh, a young scholar's uh, career to help you find a job, to help you pass three-year review, 
to have you get a uh, tenure, to have you get promotion to full professor. Of course, they have lifelong achievement. So you know, yeah. that's in a carefully designed a series of awards. If you're ISS member, you're qualified. And for mm -hmm. professors, uh, you are. We also have this practitioner impact award. We also have Han Mendelssohn uh, teaching award. And, all, and we also have a Management Science Best Paper Award. So like for mm -hmm. the papers published in the past three years, and there's a process. Eventually, we you invite the community to, to vote. So this year yes. is uh, Professor Grace Gu and Fong Zhu's platform disintermediation paper. Okay, is the winner. But you know, say, but you're you're qualified, uh, you know, for the best paper award of management science. All right, so that's Informs and ISS and Informs, yes. and then CIST right. comes before CIST comes before Informs, and that's yes. the one that yes. I was thinking. Because it's exactly. the same people, isn't it? <laughs> it's the same people. You know, so it used to be like part of the uh, part of uh, informs, you know, but now uh, they are separate. Uh, you know, uh, for different reasons. Uh, but we are uh, the family. We work together. Uh, for example, uh, for the CIS CIST launch event is basically for ISS to announce in you know, all the awards. So okay. it, we're still one big family, but you know, so, but it's separate. You know, so how they organize the conference is totally up to the conference in you know, a uh, organization uh, organization committee gee it makes it really tough don't you think i mean like we we do have multiple well the ice field has been growing for a long time and we've with that i have also the different types of sub communities right we have multiple communities like as a phd student for example someone outside of north america Gee, I mean, like, I'd love to go to CIST. I'd love to go to Informs. I'd love to go to AOM and ISIS and, you know, all the other ones. We haven't even talked about the regional ones. But I can't just jump on, <laughs> on a plane every month and go to some conference, you know, yeah. let alone have enough papers to actually submit to all these conferences or all these journals. So yeah. it's, uh, I think it, it was necessary, I guess, right? Because, you know, four or five journals and two conferences do not serve this field anymore. But I also wonder if we're leading to fragmentation. I mean, do we have a community here and another community there? Um, I, I don't know. I just wanted to pose the question if if, if this is a, a good thing and a natural thing or a, are we fragmenting the field a little bit more? Because I can't certainly, I, you know, we, I can't hop that many conferences. And also, Nick, we can't pay our students to go to all of them. We do have to make a choice, right? So, um, yeah. I get for many, right? So, you know, for many areas, it's like thousands of dollars to for one trip, right? So it's a lot of money. So, yeah. and the way you think about it is if you're in a business school, right? It, and you're in the US, I think there are three big conferences, right? There's going to be ISIS, which is hardcore IS. Then there's uh, ISS, CIST, which is kind of the part that overlaps with operations. There are tons of, in the U.S., uh, it's kind of like there used to be operations management departments and information systems departments. And in most places, with very rare exceptions, they've pretty much merged. merged. Yeah. You know, one one, and they either got rid of the other one. Like at University of Georgia, for example, there is no operations. There's just IS. Uh, places like Notre Dame, we never really had either. They were part of management, but the two are together. So we don't distinguish between publishing and say ISR or MSOM or something like that, right? It's like, it's all, you know, so a lot of these in the US, a lot of these operations and IS, there's, so so that kind of operations tradition of IS, well, it's clearly in forms and, and, and ISS and CIST. And then there's the uh, people who come from other management disciplines, right? AOM is the biggest, right? So it's like, if you're management, like, let's say you do entrepreneurship, like you do, let's say you do strategy, OB, right near that end of IS, you're probably really comfortable at Academy of Management. If you're more operations, you're publishing an MSOM and, and POMS in, in addition to ISR and, and management science, you know, you're, you're really, and really comfortable with informs. And then IS is like, traditional AI hardcore IS, right? And the way I'm seeing it is it's blurring, especially since the big data and everyone's doing data science, it's blurring between all the three. So the oh, yeah. same person goes to all three and they see a big chunk of the same community. And this is what I am a little worried about because I love ISIS um, and we have to think about this, but the way I, and I'll just tell you where my brain is, when ISIS is overseas, and if I don't want to go, I just go to the other two. I go to AOM, I go to sit. And because they're in the States, they're easy for me. It's great people. Why am I going to the other? Now, that's just me as a, a US, you know, I'm selfish, right? Uh, 
Uh, and I, no, I wonder I think if, you have as a my point. career I mean, evolves, I'll only go to ISIS when it's in the U.S. You know, I, I do wonder. think it's a big. I do think it's a big question to ask. Like, if as as the you know the the phenomena have long blurred the lines of our departments, our conferences, or our journals, really, yeah, it'd be really hard to distinguish a true operation from true eyes. Where's the borderline? No one knows. Right? There is no borderline. So the question yeah. is, if you're a community, if you're ISIS, if you're AIS, for example, what do you do? You can be very exclusive and saying, no, 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 we're IS and everybody else there is not is that's one move the other one's of course being being more inclusive and saying like let's invite everybody in and sort of and then you end up being a general management or general business or general science kind of thing right and i think what we're seeing is um the different communities they follow different strategies right a lot of people in is have that exclusivity argument our turf everything digital is ours and everybody else is you know is our, if you're not our friend you're our you know enemy or something <laughs> Um, and then maybe other, I guess what Informs is doing, what it looks like to me is they're trying the opposite. They're trying to bring more people to them because they are a broader, like a higher level community. DJ, what do you think? Oh, I really appreciate this discussion. Um, in the first of all, I just got my visa to India. <laughs> Good. So you're going to ISIS? I, Good. Yeah, I'm going to uh, to the mentor. I'm the mentor for the doctor consultant. Oh, yeah. that's wonderful. I, yeah. I, you know, I, I enjoy. You know, I you know, I love to uh, have discussion with young scholars. Okay, yeah. and hear what they say, provide feedback. Um, uh, I do actually want to appreciate uh, the IS. Actually, I want to embrace. Uh, actually, I want to thank the IS. You know, for uh, uh, embrace me uh, to be a scholar. Okay. Um, uh, sometimes my colleague are joking. I'm an OM guy hiding in IS. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, why I appreciate uh, IS? I think IS, you know, see, uh, is open minded. Okay. And, uh, you know, say I feel like home in, in the IS community. Um, and the IS scholars, uh, there are two things I like most. In the first, they have a bigger picture. IS scholars, okay, that's why you know so I love to pick a, a publish bigger picture papers. They help us, you know, how do we think? Okay, how do we think in the in the age of gender AI? It's IS scholars, okay? They open that entire field. That's why we're going to do this uh, in the machine creativity or analytic creativity special issue. Uh, the other things we do is we are our boundaries. That is actually our strength because our strength, sorry. See, mm -hmm. where do you can do most creative work? Uh, is the is the interdisciplinary area. You have the boundary area. So when I'm working with a marketing professor, you know, we have very interesting things. You know, say, for example, you know, I'm interested in technology and he or she is interested in, in marketing problems, eh? right there, okay, we can work together. But overall, I would say, you know, I appreciate the IS community is, you know, bigger picture, always working on cutting edge problems, interesting problems, uh, then, you know, and also, you know, they are open-minded and they promote, you know, they, you know, well, boundary research. And as a consequence, we actually help other field to move. Um, so one uh, one incentive for me to do the special issue of human algorithm connection and the EIC one, you know, the IS to be the center and the front. So that you know, by doing mm. this human AI, well, of course, you know, we have been doing that IS for decades. Mm. <laughs> human mm. AI <laughs> interface. By doing that, we hope we can also bring every other department to the frontier area. So, you know, we say seven departments, but not just the six others. And anybody, even accounting, they can submit a paper to the special issue. Uh, so basically the impact hmm. IS can do is much broader. So we should continue to do that. I feel now this is the best time, okay, for IS scholars to continue to lead because we always open new field. And, but you also have a very nice framework. That's why I actually appreciate even qualitative thinking, even philosophic thinking for the special issue ISI we're doing. So because I many science, we don't have commentary, we don't have a research note, but ISR, we do. So for yeah. ISR special issue, we open to all kinds of format. You can write yeah. uh, even philosophical piece or qualitative piece. We have Arika Schultz, she is a qualitative researcher. So yeah. she is another co-editor. So anyway, yeah. uh, but I think this is the best time okay, for IS scholars. And there's evidence like, you know, yes, a fast track, it works better for information systems. And true story at, at, at Informs, I was there. Um, many OM professors, they, they actually 
came to our CISD conference. I said, why did you guys come? They says, you guys are doing much more interesting topics. That is true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> it is true. Yeah. Yes. That's a very powerful, wonderful plea that you made there. I, I thought myself, I, you know, people can't see this, but I've been nodding all throughout what you've just been saying. I think you got it spot on, to be honest. And I mean, what when, what do you said about your human eye collaboration, special issue management science? Over 300 submissions, most of them from my ass. That's just, that's just great. That's just impressive. Do you know already when it will be out? Will it be out next year? Uh, we are basically once we accept paper, we publish. So basically, for the uh, for the hard copy, we don't know. We will have to wait for other departments. But basically, what we do once we accept the paper, we publish the paper online. So yeah, yeah, the first uh, first paper I accept design science. Those scholars from Israel and Imba and her team. Uh, so it's beautiful paper. It's like you know how humans and AI they can learn from each other. Okay, wow. <laughs> and with all kinds, it's a beautiful design science paper. I use that as a raw model to the PhD in a seminar I'm teaching this semester. Uh, so it's cool. beautiful for paper uh so there are more that are coming because we have uh, the most submissions and on average you know you know 13 percent except we should have the most papers showing up on yeah. the special <laughs> issue influence everybody else yeah that's wonderful i think we uh i think we're gonna wrap up here we don't want to take your whole morning dj but uh, it, before we let you go as you know as you know a lot of folks for whatever reason <laughs> like to listen to our podcast uh do you have any final words that you'd like to i really liked your your uh kind of reflection on is uh you know about what we're talking about anything with either information systems with conferences or with journals is there a final kind of um reflection Yes, I do. Yes. First of all, uh, I'm, you know, next week is Thanksgiving. I'm so thankful uh, for Jan and Nick, you're doing this, uh, particularly for management science. Uh, so I want the young scholars over the world to thinking about management science. And again, uh, management science, 69 years old, Nobel laureates, uh, they published, you know, say 26 Nobel laureates uh, published in management science. It's about you know, 28%. Okay. If just go to management science website, we say, hey, Nobel laureates, they published. Okay, these here are the names. Um, so you know, see that is you know, you just just aim high. You're a young scholar, aim high, but also help management science to be one of the major IS journals. That's why I'm here. So basically, of course, we have all kinds of perspectives. You know, please help us to be one of the leading journals for the IS field. Of course, we are leading for other even finance too. Okay, uh, but for IS, I need your help. And also provide the feedback, and the feedback I heard is very useful. The other data I can share with you, if you publish in many science, your paper uh, gets read. So I would yeah. pay, pay download 1.5 million last year. Mm -hmm. wow. Those are paid, $30 per paper. Paid downloads 1.5 million. And our papers got cited uh, in the, the economic report of the U.S. president. And guess what? Four papers from many science got uh, uh, cited two from is yeah wow. I, I saw that i actually saw that on, uh, yeah brian yafson jeffrey who yes. michael smith okay uh the long tail paper uh brian yafson and uh, michael smith uh the frictionless commerce paper so those two papers are cited in this year's okay economic um report of the president and they are uh, the other two are strategy papers and also Google uh, has a matrix, you know, Google, um, you know, according to Google matrix, so management science is now the top three. So if you put UTD24 right there, so we're just after JFE and RFS. So management science number three, high impact metrics. You should use that to the dean, you know, if they don't count management science, definitely, you know, show them, okay, that is, uh, you know, say the impact. So my final thing is, you know, say for uh, back to your question, Nick, I think excellent question on like, you know, say what is my um, advice to uh, to the young scholars? I think, you know, um, <clears throat> I like to give everybody a quote. OK, the quote is, is unhappy papers are all alike. Every happy paper is happy in its own way. <laughs> this is like with this, apologies <laughs> apologies to Torstey and Peter Thiel see what yeah. I want to say is you know 
please differentiate your research, okay? So before you submit to management science, you know, say, look, you know, how can I differentiate our, in our paper from each other, from each journal? So that way, you know, say, we can publish. Okay, my role is I want to publish more and a better IS papers. So if we can do that, the IS community gets bigger and stronger. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks so DJ, much. DJ, record one little quote from you, uh, right? Uh, what was DJ paraphrasing? Uh, I have no the idea. Unhappy, unhappy papers are all alike. Happy papers. Uh, Tolstoy, and I just I just looked it up. And Tolstoy originally said, the famous Leo, in Anna Karenina, all happy families are alike. Each unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. So that's Tolstoy. And uh, that's Gee, the, I, I read that beautiful. like 30 years ago, but wonderful. DJ, it was such a pleasure. It, it really was. It was wonderful to learn from you, to get to know you. Uh, thanks for coming. You I know, really and, mean and people it. don't know DJ, maybe uh, some of them. I have to tell you this. I've known DJ. DJ, you came when I was an assistant professor at University of Georgia. He's at Georgia Tech. He came over, gave a talk. That's when I met him first. Here's what I know about DJ. He is always positive. He's super friendly. He's nice to everyone. He's a tremendous intellect. Whatever he would present would be excellent. And most of all, he dresses perfectly every time I see him. <laughs> yes, He's got a beautiful that, sport coat. He's got the co He looks, and I would say this for advice. Any junior people, you know DJ, just imitate him. Exactly how DJ dresses, exactly how he acts with other people. That's how you want to be. And you'll, you're, you know, Anyway, DJ, you're a gentleman. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. You made my day. Yeah. Send your papers <laughs> to Management Science, everybody. <laughs> yes. Bye-bye. All right. See you all.